on this week of Two Beers Deep. We will be talking about the uh, NBA All-Star Game, a little controversy in the NFL, uh, things being brought back up about Miles Garrett, and Tomlin had something to say on the ESPN, um, as well as uh, NXT TakeOver. I want to hear what your thoughts were on that, Greg. And Rory McIlroy completely sucking on the last day of a tournament as the number one ranked player in the world, as is tradition. <laughs> Three, two, one, action. <laughs> Hello, Greg. Hello, Deke. How goes it? It goes and it goes. Yeah. How's it go with you? It's good. I'm looking at... So I'm running two tracks. Okay. One is very loud mm-hmm. and one is not so loud. So I don't know the difference, but we're going to figure it out. All right. We have... So this video will be a YouTube video. Uh, we'll be back to uploading those. We are changing the way the set looks for this podcast so you know it's the podcast mm-hmm. and not the tubers deep facebook show I'm trying to mix things up here in case you're curious about i suppose yes you can move the okay you did a little bit yeah i was trying to get the flag in and i was like ah, we'll figure it out there's a very good chance i'm just gonna be alternating the way that i'm sitting because i'm either gonna be laying back i'm just gonna be like this or something like that i just gotta figure out what's comfy for me it's totally fine <laughs> uh i want to start the game or the day off though with where'd it go didn't i just have them out here hmm. yeah oh, rush yeah. more yes so we actually uh i met with a bunch of my six pen la familia yesterday at the six pen uh reunion we had our second reunion since it closed i guess two years ago officially that's pretty great um, that you guys are still kind of in touch with all that oh, and yeah. stuff they're so, awesome people. So six pen was a wonderful and very very lovely place i must say yeah i can agree with that oh yeah um also had a lot of free alcohol that time i wonder you know what hmm. i think i know what the problem is for some reason and i don't want this to screw with anybody back home so hold on one second ding 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 ding, <laughs> ding. no it's the same well so it has it as input l input r but they're the same volume so whatever this episode <laughs> might be a uh might be a little screwed up guys so yeah. apologies on that one that's okay we're we're still professional in some sort of aspect of this but we had many people so one i would like to say there it is <laughs> shout out to nate burns uh he approached me he is a friend you know his uh wife was a six pen employee nate's always been part of the family he says that he listens to this podcast on his way to work really um, every week yeah so it was nice to hear somebody say that they they liked the podcast portion because as you guys know now that we're putting this on youtube i need to look over there a little more we <laughs> do our facebook live show we have this podcast which we um I've just always kept this one consistent. The Facebook show obviously gets more views and clicks and everything. Just is what it is. But uh, another person, Chef, said he, we need to bring the card game back because mm. Chef was there and Chef says he loves the card game. He wants to bring it right back. So yeah, that makes me feel good, man. One of my maybe now realized dreams is being part of someone's morning commute in a very very glorious way. So I'm quite proud that I achieved that goal at least. I'm 100% sure it's because of you. (laughs) The glue. Absolutely. (laughs) All right. So, Greg, walk us through what Rushmore is. All right. So, Rushmore is this very, very fun card game that Deke's parents uh, got him for Christmas. Shout out to Marsha and Chipper, by the way. Thank you for this. Uh, We have a number of different type of cards on here. We got stuff like Debatable where we each have, I believe, 30 seconds to answer a question, and we each give a different answer for it. Now, some of these we've already done before. Like, the most popular one that we've done is, what is your sports fantasy? I would say the most popular one is the bullfighter, or the rideable. The rideable one, yeah. We also have stuff called categories, and I'm trying to figure it out. Ah, categories. So, in these ones, you essentially have to name different types of things that go with this country. So, let's say, let's go with this card. So, for instance, countries which have won the World Cup in soccer. We go back and forth trying to figure out who has actually won it. And if we're wrong, then we can call bullshit on it. And if we are proven correct, the other person loses. We also have stuff called You Choose, where it's kind of the same thing as a category, except the difference is is that we are choosing between a specific category to do back and forth on. So for this one, it's women athletes or Title IX sports, which that would be difficult. Would Title IX sports just be women's college sports or sports that were put in place for Title IX? Because I don't know the difference between those. I would believe it would be the latter. 
that it would be put in place specifically for uh, women's athletics, if I remember correctly. I apologize to women everywhere. I don't know that one. Uh, that's okay. Title IX was always the one that, the one thing that I remember from college that intrigued me so much. Yeah. I don't know why. And then, I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's the same thing as debatable. I'm sorry. I thought the No, ones this were... is the same thing as category. Okay, yeah, debatable is the one that was the bullfighter one. I yes. was, like, trying to think there were two separate ones for nope. some reason. I don't know why. So, Greg, you'll flip it. Uh, what it is for the category ones, you have five seconds to do it back and forth. Uh, for the debatables, you have 30 seconds. And if he picks a stance on one of the debatables, I cannot take that stance. Yeah. It makes it really entertaining because you have to be able to believe in yourself to be able to do stuff like this. And this is me doing a very, very poor job of shuffling with only atrocious. one. Atrocious. Yeah, very, very atrocious. I can't shuffle to save my life, so. Why don't you try it with two hands? I don't know. But I can Cupid shuffle at least. Do it. No, not right now. Yes. No, no, no. Do okay, it. category. Keep, keep it, keep it <laughs> cities, right cities. No, no not right now. You're not right now. streaming into the mic first off. Oh, my God. Second off, keep it shuffle. No. Cities with only one professional sports teams. And... Pulling up the Cupid shuffle. Oh my god, no. We are not doing this now. Uh, it's not we. You said you I can't. am not doing this now. Yes, you are. No, I am not. Why do we have to do this now? We are not doing it. You I, said you could do it. I can because it's the easiest dance to do at a wedding, first off. Okay. It is. I'm not doing it. It might be easier to pull up on the front. Oh, Jesus. Cupid I'm, shuffle. I am not doing it. Uh, I understand that you don't think you are. I'm not doing it. I don't care if you turn the music on. I'm not doing it. We're just gonna have we're gonna have really really bad content right now because of you. No, no. <laughs> so wait, time out. No, we are going to have bad content because of me. Yes, because I flat out said don't you do it. You flat out said you could do it. I'm not doing it. So I'm the reason that yes. there's no good content happening. Yes. Not that you said you could do a dance and when now you're I repeatedly it. said so that you I can't won't. do the Cupid. Show. I can, but I'm not going to do it now. So Greg confirmed on the show, Greg cannot do the Cupid Shuffle. Fine. You know what? I will retract my statement. I cannot do the Cupid Shuffle. Thank you. You're welcome. Because you suck at it. Pain in the ass. Three, two, one, go. Green Bay Packers. Pittsburgh. Bullshit. <laughs> nah, I didn't read it before. <laughs> All right, restart. All right. Three, two, one, go. Green Bay. Charlotte. Bullshit. Carolina. That's not Charlotte. Yeah, that counts as Charlotte. It says cities. Carolina is not the city. Where you, do you lose. Oh, come on. No, where? that one, that one, I'm not, I'm not losing on. All right, fine. Because you said Carolina. They're the Carolina Panthers. They play in Charlotte, though, So man. then if I say, you know, it, w you consider New England Patriots only Boston. No, it's Ooh, New England. All right. You know what I mean? All right, all right, all right, fine. All right, loser does keep a shuffle. Get oh, in there, right? no, I'm not doing it now. I understand, because you can't. Uh-huh. Nope, I can't do it whatsoever. Cannot do it. I'm uh -uh. aware. I am not. I don't know who you're trying to brag to. You obviously <laughs> you can't do it. Can't do it. Um, nope. So I win that one so Greg would take a shot. Mm -hmm. But he is not having fun today. Nope. Yeah, especially because oh, now I'm so. staring at that pinnacle pumpkin spice one that you had us do this past weekend. And I have like well, just Well, you only had to do it just... if you lost. That's very true. Um, just like you lost doing the Cupid Shuffle. I feel bad for Sarah. Because you say, do you lie a lot? Out of curiosity? I don't think I do. Well, I believe my own truths, if that's the best way to put it. So you're a big liar. <laughs> uh, so let's branch off into the NBA playoffs, or the NBA All-Star game, excuse me. The NBA All-Star game was this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, Max, an idiot, because he told me that Devin Booker was not should not be the favorite because he's not a three-point shooter in the three-point contest. And he literally has already won a three-point contest. So <laughs> you're wrong. Uh, Mac... Did t he did like Derek um, jo Jones? Jo Derek Jones Jr. Jones Jr. Yeah. I saw today that uh, he got a Puma deal because of him winning that dunk contest. Yeah, actually. I believe it. Puma's mm -hmm. been trying to infiltrate that market for so long, and mm -hmm. they did with Aiton and uh, uh, who's the other guy? Uh, Marvin Bagley. Yeah, Marvin Bagley, um, and then uh, I think Trey Young is Puma as well. I think he I is. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I don't know that. I don't have to look into that. But Puma did like a lot of young name guys. Um, so interesting. I mean. He shouldn't have won, but I'm glad he got a deal. There's zero percent jumping over Taco Fall alone. What they did was the like the judges tried to match it so that it would keep going to end on a fifty and not a fifty, and they screwed up. So Aaron Gordon has now lost two dunk contests while giving us three of the top five dunks ever 
in a dunk contest. And they wonder why the dunk contest has kind of fallen out of favor over the last few years. <sighs> well, it's just depressing. It's just like... It is. You have a guy up there that literally not only jumped over top of the mascot on a hoverboard, but put the ball underneath his mm-hmm. legs and then dunked it in, and that didn't win. You know what drives me nuts is that we would have like some of the best stars in the game do the three point contest. We have guys do the skills challenge, but yet for some reason we can't get the biggest stars to do the dunk contest. I don't contest. think we have the big name stars in the skills challenge. You don't think bam out of bio one bam out of bio is having a phenomenal year though, man skills challenge. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, okay. I okay. think, I don't All think right. anybody would beat like Russell Westbrook in that. He's too fast. That's true. But like, that's why I don't get, why can't we get the big stars to do some of this stuff? Cause I feel like they would have way more fun with this than anything. Yeah, I mean, I would just be interested to see guys that are actually meant to be out there for the skill challenge or the skill challenge. That's so, fine. Um, but no, I mean, you know, the three point contest, Buddy Heald mm-hmm. uh, won that, deserving. Mm-hmm. Um, dude's a freak. And then you get the uh, All Star game itself. Did you watch any of it? I, I watched a little bit of it. I, I must say, I, I love that they kind of took a page out of the NHL's playbook with their All Star game of making each quarter a mini game. Yeah, uh, so that was a Chris Paul find. Mm hmm. Um, some tournament he goes to does that. It's a charity event, but he loves it. So they mm-hmm. brought that back in, and basically, whichever team won that quarter, um, their money went to a charity, and then I didn't understand the point total thing because mm-hmm. I didn't. I was watching it while at the six pen thing, and then I came home and just passed out. The point total thing is a little interesting because apparently the basketball tournament does it where. It, they do like a version of it where the first team, as soon as someone hits 25, that's halftime. And then as soon as someone hits 50, game's over. Yeah, but why 157? I think there was... Or 158. There was there was some meaning behind it. I, I really don't know the actual the logistics for it or something like that. I mean, obviously, all-star games, you're expecting them to... They're going to be high scoring regardless of it. But, I mean, watching the fourth quarter especially, man, like... That was one of the most entertaining and competitive All-Star games I've ever seen. Actually, no, I'll take that back. That was the most competitive yeah. All-Star game yeah, I ever saw for the NBA. And I think this new format is something that it was a brilliant thing for them to do. And then I read I read a CBS Sports article today. And yes, uh, I, we bash CBS Sports a lot here, so I mean, I'll take it with a grain of salt. But I was very intrigued by the notion that could you imagine if they implemented something like this in the regular season? So they brought up the whole, like, let's have a tournament during the season and that will... Well, that, I, it just... It, so for me, then, I'm, like, almost not going to play my guys for the regular season well, leading up to it. Well, no, no, no. The tournament aspect of it, that's that's a separate thing. But I'm, ter- I'm referring to more of the concept of doing a set, like, point total to reach and then kind of maybe doing it something that way where instead and then you always are going to try to win regardless of it you're there's never going to be a time issue uh you're always guaranteed to have a game winning shot and stuff like that you have more uh, drama yeah to but it. what if you don't i mean you just play till you reach that limit mm-hmm. so if they don't reach a limit for five out you know what i mean yeah like, there could be some drawbacks to it i bet yeah and i don't know but you could always but, I mean, it doesn't have to be as high as 157 or something. Like, the reason that this was set, obviously, is because it's an all-star game. So, there's going to be elite players going at it. But it, you could do regular season stuff where maybe they set the max at, I don't know, 90 or something like that. You have low-scoring games, yes. But I would argue that <laughs> maybe know. you add a little more drama to the game. Why? I just think it's a it's a concept essentially i think yeah and like i'm not I, shitting on it i'm just curious yeah. why and then there was like another idea that i read where foul shots at the end of the game will actually subtract from the other team's total instead of adding to yours i mean what's the difference i think it's so the other team doesn't reach it i guess oh so you're not that's not a separate entity that's a yeah it's a continuation of it i guess yeah, I mean... So, like, instead of the game ending on foul shots, the foul shots are just count against the other team yeah, and make them. It, I don't know. It's interesting. Like, I'm not a big fan of it in the way that, like, I think basketball with the time limits we have now bring enough drama into it for mm-hmm. it to be good. Um, but it's interesting. Well, I mean, the three-point shot and the shot clock everyone thought was going to kill the game, but apparently that just made it even better. So. Yeah, but I, I would say that the three-point and the shot clock weren't complete changes to how basketball is played that's true well i mean i I guess they are because it's a three and a shot clock Mm -hmm. but they're not like changing the goal they're not fundamental changes yeah like the shot clock i think might be the one that would bite me in the ass or maybe the small ball era but 
with this like you're changing the reason to be good at basketball the reason to be good at basketball right now is to outscore your opponent when the time runs out right in that setting i would almost play no defense Mm -hmm. i would just generate i mean it'd be the houston rockets just three 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 (laughs) there's no defense in the nba right now to be fair but that's just my no way that that's no i know i know it's it's a trash ass giannis giannis antetokounmpo blocking lebron on a layup last night that was cool that was defense yeah that was cool um i'm surprised it was as close as it was to be honest because it did get really heated and it was one of those things where like i was a you know not I wasn't worried anything was going to break out, but there were some little screaming matches. I, I, stuff. I remember when the rosters were announced, and we immediately both thought that LeBron's team just absolutely was going to destroy them. Well, on paper, it's 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 not far not even, It's not even up for debate. I on also that just one. hate Ben Simmons, so <laughs> that's that's okay. But I mean, no, I I think last night proved that the NBA has found a winning recipe. For yeah, the oh, game they move. fixed it. They they definitely <sighs> fixed it. I I think that. For the longest, for the last maybe fifteen years, the idea of the All Star Game was all spectacle. It was just seeing these guys all together, yeah. and then it you was just, just what can they getting, do? Can they alley oop? Can they do this? Right, getting everyone on the floor at once. But now, when the idea of trying to get a game in and try to make it competitive and try to get them to want to do, it, and then add the charity aspect to it and stuff, and then you saw, yeah. I think the Chicago Scholars Fund apparently won three hundred thousand dollars in charity because of that. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do enjoy that. I think I actually figured out. Why it's like left and I don't know. Mm. Well, it has it on two inputs. So for anybody listening, just make sure you at least have your right headphone in. Because <laughs> it looks like for some reason the left headphone is not as loud as the right one. And mm. I don't know why. I mean, more, so, pe- more people are right, right-handed right or right-dominant in this world anyway. So it should be okay. Just weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, they fixed it. Like, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a much better... Uh, process. I thought it was a much better way to pick the teams, like because even when they did the first draft like that, they did yeah. it, you know, off camera, and it was really shadily weird. And you're curious about because at that time it was LeBron and Kyrie issues, and like who took who. See, I still don't like the fantasy draft aspect of it. I, I mean, like hockey, oh, hockey it. tried to do that too, and then it just it just fell flat almost but then when they got back to the new format where now made it like a mini tournament almost with all the divisions represented i like that i think it adds a little more that's intrigue to it i like how every team is represented in some sort of way because you have to fill up within your division i'm not saying basketball should go to something like that but i personally liked the east versus west more than the fantasy draft yeah but it wasn't like a good format back then so Mm -hmm. then comes the argument of like all right you know give us the east versus west make it mean something but keep the same format whereas i think the the positive about the fantasy draft is that you get to play with guys you don't get to see mm-hmm. so you like if you're in the west you play west teams almost the whole time. right like would you the, might play east but would the east west format work in this new all-star game setup yeah i mean it, yeah it okay would. The West would destroy, but it would. I mean, the West has always been the team, been the conference that's just dominated them forever. I mean, yeah, yeah can't argue with that. Uh, but coming out of the season, I mean, I'll say that I'm not voting against Giannis for MVP. Really? Right now. Yeah, it just, you know, man, he is, wow. Mm-hmm. Like, his entire game has just elevated each season. Um, I don't know. I mean, maybe there's. I mean, I, I would like to think Dame's in the conversation, but when you're not winning, it's tough yeah, to talk the, tra- about. Talk about the Trailblazers, man. I mean, they've fallen off a cliff compared to what they were last year. I don't see them recovering from this, uh, honestly. Sucks. Obviously, yeah, because the Trailblazers. I mean, they were the ones last year that went on that run to get to the third seed in the West. I mean, they lost in the first. round. Did they lose in the first round? No. They lost to uh, the Warriors in the yeah. finals. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is the first time they got to the conference finals in a while. But yeah. we're not going to see one of those magic runs that we thought they were going to have. Um, Giannis is definitely up there right now. Um, you could definitely make an argument for a couple other guys. Uh, Kawhi. Kawhi, definitely. Um, I could maybe make an argument um, for a, a Nikola Vucevic in, um, in Denver. Uh, yeah. I, I could, man. That, that, that Denver team's good. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. To, to, for for me, he's one of my favorite players in the mm-hmm. league, and I love him. But uh, I don't know. MVP is it's you're you're like dissecting right towards the end of it, mm-hmm. 
And so it's it'll be interesting. There's definitely some guys that could be dark horses too moving in forward, especially if their teams make runs. I mean, oh, if, if the Pacers make a run in, Demontis Sabonis could definitely be a, in conversation. Or Bam Adebayo for Miami, we touched on him too. He's having a phenomenal year this year. Yeah, so if those two are going to be in the conversation, then put Jason Tatum up there too. I, oh no, that's fair. Jason Tatum's having a f- great year, and Jalen Brown has found a way to be able to actually live up to the potential that we all thought he could have. Yeah, really. I think it's because he got the the it's mop the, the mop cut off. So yeah. there's that. Yeah, and he. I mean, he's got a chip on his shoulder. He's got you know he's angry. Mm-hmm. He wants to uh, he wants to prove that he's not just a one year wonder and he's actually something. So we'll, yeah, we'll see. I'm, and a, and a guy that you know what that we actually we probably should have said as another leading candidate for MVP, Luca. Oh, by far, yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent, Luca. You, you would still take Giannis over Luca? Yes, uh, I would. But uh, Luca's right there, mainly because I don't know. It's it's Giannis just being leaps and bounds right now. I mm-hmm. mean, obviously LeBron's there, AD's there. Um, you'll get those conversations, but Giannis right. is just unbelievable. I would say if um, I believe are the are the Mavs like right now in playoff contention right now? Uh, let's look at the let's look at the yeah, standings. Yeah, look at the standings because if I. I mean, Giannis would be an obvious I candidate. I believe they are. Yeah, Giannis would be an obvious candidate just because I'm pretty sure the Bucks are first or second in the East Oh, right dude, now. they'll break 70 wins this year, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, so I could easily see that. But if Luka can They've get... They've only lost eight games, the Bucks. That's crazy. <laughs> but if Luka, if Luka can get the Mavs to the playoffs for the first time in a while, I, it'd be hard to vote against him. Especially, he's a triple-double machine. Yeah, there's seven right now. So the okay. Blazers are nine. Uh, it goes Lakers, Nuggets, Clippers, Jazz, Rockets, Thunder, Mavericks, Grizzly. Mm-hmm. And then on the which thank God Timberwolves are fourteenth. That makes Jeez. me laugh so hard. And then in the East it's the Bucks, Raptors, Celtics, Heat, 76ers, Pacers, Nets, Magic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had said at the beginning of the season it'll be a Celtics Lakers NBA final still. You think it's le- still leaning towards that way? You know, it, the Raptors have picked it up. They've proven that they're more a team. Uh the Heat have looked really good. Seventy Sixers, I think are I, I don't. I just don't think the 76ers mm. will ever be good. I'd be terrified to see how the Pacers play with a very healthy Victor Oladipo yeah. in the playoffs right now. I think the Nets are a year ahead of schedule, and obviously that's going to change next year when KD's healthy. Yeah, out of the Wizards, Bulls, Hornets, Pistons, Knicks, Hawks, Cavs, and I can read these back through, or the uh, Blazers, Spurs, Pelicans, Suns, Kings, Wolves, Warriors, who's most surprising you that they're outside the playoffs looking in right now? Mm, I mean, I could go with Spurs just because it's the obvious. I mean, even if they don't necessarily have the name talent that they always do, it's pop. Yep. Like, it's hard to go against it. I can't say the Warriors because, I mean, they're going into this year with... 12 ba- and 43. Yeah, they're going into this year with basically developing all their young players. So, yeah. I can't argue with that. Um, the team that I, w- I hope makes the playoffs is the Pelicans. Just because I won Zion in the playoffs. Yeah, they're... Uh, so, they're five games behind the Grizzlies right now. And in between them and that spot are the Spurs, the Blazers. Uh, the Blazers are three games back. Spurs are tied with them at 23. Uh, I would like to see it. I would like to see if the Pelicans beat the Grizzly for the eighth seed, Rookie of the Year is going to be a interesting conversation. Would you give it to Zion then in that case? Uh, if Zion was healthy the whole year and playing right now, it'd be him no questions asked because the dude is just insane. Like, John Moran's been great, but wow, Zion. Yeah, it, it almost is kind of like the argument of – I don't want to say it's, it is like it, but it's similar to the concept of a rookie missing his entire rookie season with injury. What do you mean? Well, we but, sh- we don't give – we technically count their following year as their rookie season, and we kind of give this first year a pass almost. But then we look at it with Zion missing almost half the season, and John Moran has been doing work the entire year and gotten the Grizzlies to the point where we did not think they would be here at this point. I would find it really hard to put Zion over Jaw in that case. Yeah, but I would argue that Zion looks better. I think he has a better team, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but that you can't. Are you going to put that? I mean, then I, that's that's a weird. Yeah. The reason I'm going to say that is because Ben Simmons had a better team than Donovan Mitchell. That's true. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. But I, I, I get what you're saying because that is a factor that belongs in the conversation. Mm-hmm. For me, it's that Zion has been playing – um, like so is Jaw, but Zion's been playing amazing, mm-hmm. and Jaw will win it in my opinion. Like he just will. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think it's like this audacious conversation to say they're almost tied. No, I, I 
I don't think it's audacious at all, but I just truly believe that from the whole season perspective, I truly think more needs to be put into the aspect that Ja got his team to heights that nobody thought that the Grizzlies were going to be in at this point, and I think he deserves rookie of the year just from that alone. Did you think that Tomlin should have won coach of the year then? I don't think, <laughs> Do Har- I, don't, I don't think no Harbaugh one I, expected us to be good. I don't think Harbaugh should have gotten it. Really? No. Like, I think Lamar Jackson just absolutely dominated this year, and Harbaugh rode his coattails. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, but the thing about Tomlin is I, I put him up there because lots of injuries, mm-hmm. and he still almost got us a playoff spot. I could have made an argument for Mike Vrabel getting head coach of the year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt LaFleur yeah. is another big one. Mm-hmm. Um, Kyle Shanahan. Well, then again, he has his quarterback back, so it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so let's transition over there. So Mike Tomlin, did you watch him on ESPN this morning? I saw the – well, I was at work, but I, I, caught, the, I caught the video on Twitter of him. Um, I've, never, I've never heard anyone say, uh, say what was it, we, we were hacked off. Hacked off. Hacked off, man. Well, that means – uh, It's a very PG way to say what he meant to say. Well, so. yeah, for being hacked off, it means he was pissed off and, like, he believes that – ESPN did a hack job covering it. Mm -hmm. Uh, So basically, Mike Tallman stood up and said, you know, Mason did not say any racial slurs. I was on the field directly after no one said Mm it. I've worked with the Cleveland Browns in the NFL. No one said it. None of his teammates have come out and said, I'm behind Miles Garrett. Yeah. No one's on Miles Garrett's side except for the fans in the city of Cleveland. Right. I I truly crazy. Yeah. Looking at this, Mike Tomlin's word holds way much more weight than anything Miles Garrett has said. And you look at some of the evidence in it, like, Miles Garrett the very next day apologized mm-hmm. to Mason. Miles mm-hmm. um, Garrett didn't say it. And Miles Garrett, in the interview with Mina Kimes, she's like, why didn't you say it instantly? And he's like, well, I didn't want to try to justify my actions. That's the whole point of him like trying to defend himself, though. Like, If, if that would have come out probably the right after the game, though, we would have had a totally different yes. perception about what happened, but he just kind of kept his mouth shut for it. Yeah, and it's it's like, all right, so you didn't say it because you didn't want to try to justify your actions, mm-hmm. but then you said it to the league, which, like, then Miles said something along the lines, which basically he tried to blame the Steelers for covering it up, and Tomlin, like, Miles Garrett, like, tiptoed in the room, Tomlin kicked the door down because Miles Garrett said... Yeah, every quarterback in the NFL is mic'd up, but for some reason, some reason Mason lost his helmet, had to get a new one with no mic or something like that. Which, like, so you're saying he predetermined this issue by getting a new helmet. So Tomlin he, came out and said, uh, if you're going to talk bad about the Steelers, basically, like, make sure you get your facts straight. Like, do not try to say we covered anything up because everyone's been doing an investigation. Everyone's heard audio. There's mm-hmm. nothing there. Yeah, do you think my, I truly think Garrett's just going to keep writing this out because he doesn't want to give There's admission. no downside to it for Garrett. No, That's there's the not. That's the problem. He's trying to essentially push this by making himself not look like the bad guy. He is 100% never going to be at fault, really. And the, the reason is because there's always going to be people that are like, well, you weren't there. Yes, but we've used technology. We've listened to microphones from other mm-hmm. mic'd up players. We've talked to every player on that field. The NFL did an investigation. Right. Tell me why Miles didn't tell any teammates or coaches or anything after the game. Like, Tell me why there's so many Steelers standing up heavily for Mason mm-hmm. and not a single Brown player. Like, right now, don't you think it would be the time for Freddie Kitchens to say something to try to pretend to be relevant again? Ooh, that, uh, that could blow up in his face at but that point, But that's my too. point. Like, yeah. it'll blow up in his face because Miles is, is, is clearly lying. And Alex right. Azora sent out a tweet. Shout out to Alex. He sent out a tweet of Mason getting hit late. And he looked up and said, you bitch. Mm-hmm. And Alex said, not, you know, telling people what they should say, but don't you think he would have then uttered it then too or something yeah. like and everyone's like, well, you don't know, and I, and I don't know. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like, you, you cannot just continue to drag his name through the mud when no one supports you and there's no evidence for it. But right. then Cleveland fans are just like, well, he's a big – everyone knew he was a racist. No, this is just an immature player that is trying to cover up for realizing how terrible of a mistake that he made, and he is lucky that he still has a job and is trying to justify it. He was talking about – they were like, what, what do you think about, like – past helmet incidents didn't get this much and he's like i i don't want to get in trouble but like domestic violence like that's only six games and like guys smoke marijuana like this and that he said someone said to me like i wish somebody would hit miles garrett's kid over the head with a helmet and miles exact words were like why would you even say that that's so terrible 
It's like, he douche, did you it. just <laughs> did that. Like, that's literally what you did. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, like, I stand true to the fact that, and even if it was the other way around, my stance has always been, if you want this to never happen again, make him file for reinstatement on his own, mm-hmm. ban him from the league, and then you can even bring him back in six games, but you mm-hmm. should have kicked him out, had him have to reinstate back in. Um, and everyone's, you know, everyone's going to have their stupid opinions. That's the stupid opinion. Now, something that. I would like to know, and I actually did not watch the Miles Garrett interview that Mina Kimes did, but exactly what was it about the ESPN coverage of Miles Garrett's, you know, like, I guess, suspension ending that got us, that got everyone so pissed off? So the big reason that Tomlin went on ESPN mm-hmm. and he's, is because he said, you know, ESPN did not do a good job covering this. This is complete trash, basically. And they're like, well, what about it was trash? And Mike Tomlin said the fact that ESPN portrayed this as a he said, he said issue. The the conversation isn't who actually is correct, Mason or Miles. And that's the way everyone's painting it. Whose side are you on? Mm-hmm. What it is is the league, the Browns, and the Steelers organization all did their due diligence and found nothing to support Miles' mm-hmm. side. So legally, through the league, everything is pointing that Mason is correct. Mm-hmm. Now – the, the conversation then isn't he said or he said like, well, I know what I said. He said what he said. It's literally there is zero proof to back Miles Garrett. Yeah. And ESPN did not say anything about the league not finding anything or the Browns cooperating, the Steelers cooperating. It was literally that they painted this picture of like, we'll never know. And, and Tomlin said, no, we do know. Mm-hmm. Like it did not happen. There is clear evidence of it not happening in the way of tapes, Mm -hmm. in the way of like lip reading people. Mm -hmm. So it was just, it was the portrayal that it was a high school fight when there's evidence to prove that it was correct in Mason's. Right. And then also think about it. This strikes me as a, uh, as a talk show radio host who would put out one thing with all this other information and investigations and stuff telling him, no, you're wrong. But then the talk show host is just like hammering down on it and saying, no, listen to me. I am right. Screw everything what they said. Listen to my words. And I am the truth in this case. Yeah, it's it's I mean, his whole thing was like. He was like, yeah, no, I know what I heard. But at the same time, like, I'm over it. I'm sure Mason's over. It's like, no, you can't in America. You cannot do that to a guy with and and maybe he I don't know. There's so many situations it can go. But my point is here. This is a blemish now on Mason in an African-American driven league. Right. That it seems like 99 percent of everything is happening is that Miles Garrett is just using it as a last ditch effort to justify his actions when he clearly said Mm -hmm. he didn't say it. Now, there is the whole thing that he told the NFL and apparently leaked out. Mm-hmm. So there is that. Right. But he didn't say, like, look, I know what the ramifications of saying this was. I wanted to take it straight to the league. Mm-hmm. All he said was, I didn't want to justify my actions. It's like, dude, like, all you have to really say right now is, like, look, I know what that word means in the world. Mm-hmm. I wanted to take it straight to the league because he has, you know, black teammates. He has a black coach. And if Miles would have gone that route, you would have been like, all right, that makes some sense. Mm -hmm. But Miles literally went the route of, I didn't want to justify why I hit him in the head with a helmet. And it's like, bro, like justify that shit. Mm -hmm. Like justify it. So he's an idiot. Yeah. I think he just tried to figure out, okay, what's the worst possible thing that I could say about this dude for my main reason for doing this? Not that I went crazy or anything, but hey. Maybe he said something bad to me. Oh, and that's what everyone said instantly. They're like, he must have done something because I've never seen Miles Garrett flop off like that. I've never seen a player do those things. So <laughs> Mason must have done something. It's mm. like people get people die every day for little yeah. shit. Like you have no idea what's going through that guy's head. That's a sad, sad statement right there, but it's factual. Well, and honestly, kick them both out of league. I drafted Jacob Eason in a mock draft today. Really? Kick them both out. <laughs> get us Eason. Get us hurt. Start brand Man, new over. All right. <laughs> um, they can have a TV show together about them trying to be best friends again. I don't care. That'd be interesting. Completely you, over it. You sure Eason will even be there? I mean, according to Ben, he'll be gone at 13. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is a PBR in Ooh. there. Ooh. Look what? at you leaving some stuff in there from this past weekend. All clutch and stuff. <laughs> Thank you, Denny. Truly, it is. Mm-hmm. All right, so I'm surprised Denny's a truly guy. I would have thought for sure he'd be a white claw. Well, he doesn't like the seltzer. He likes that it's like watery. Ah, uh, okay. Um, because I don't think it's, it's like it is hard seltzer. seltzer. It's yeah. seltzer, yeah. Um, 
So other NFL news. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Thomas Davis taking random shots at Big Ben. Ooh, he's trying to make a name for himself now on NFL Network, apparently. Yeah, it seems screw like. him. He's an idiot. I'll never listen to a thing he has to say now. Mm-hmm. He basically came out and said that Big Ben could have played and let down the Steelers in 2019, and he's a moron. Bro, like, did he not see him on the sidelines just in a full body, like, just not full body, but, like, it was literally from his shoulder all the way down to his arm. He had to hold it in place on the sidelines with no movement whatsoever. You're telling me that he could have still throw with that. That's the thing the Steelers Depot was, or uh, I think it was Steelers Depot. It might have been Steel City Army or something like that. Mm -hmm. They were tweeting out, they're like, Thomas Davis has had multiple surgeries throughout his career. Right. One's an MCL. Mm Mm-hmm. Your knees as a linebacker are arguably as important as your arm as a quarterback. Oh, absolutely. So do you not under – like, it's so stupid to me. I think Thomas Davis has a weird perception about injuries because this is a dude that played the Super Bowl with a broken collarbone. Yeah. So maybe that's where his mindset is looking from this. Plus, this dude's also been suspended for PEDs before. Yeah, like, you you know, he's like, stop – like, why is that even a – talk? like – why is that even a conversation? You know what I mean? I don't like, know. I think that's this, the stupidest thought I've ever heard. I think the story got brought up just because of Kevin Goldberg coming out over the weekend and saying something about along the lines of we expect Ben to be ready for this season. Which, if he is, that'd be amazing because this team absolutely needs Ben to be one hundred percent healthy. Now, we're also what like eight weeks removed from Steelers football? Yeah, ten weeks. Re- you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like this dude's an idiot. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tweet. I don't know. Maybe he's just trying to get his name out there. 100%. He has a new career, man. That's all he's doing. Mm-hmm. But it's also one of those things where, like, all right, this isn't a take. This is you just being an idiot. Yeah. So, like, I don't want that dude on my TV. There were there were multiple Steelers on Twitter that just bashed this dude. Like, I saw Trey Essex, of all people, yep. tweeted at him. Like, and Essex was not on the team that long. So. Yep. Banner tweeted at him. Mm-hmm. I'd tweet at him. Like, if I was, like, dude, screw that dude. Mm-hmm. You're no longer playing. You're trying to get some headline news. You're an idiot. Yeah, by the way, one more th- quick thing. You know what another thing that pissed me off when I saw the Mike Tomlin stuff? Why in the world would they ask Antonio Brown? Uh, because you have to. Uh, like, it, it's reporting. You have to. Like, come on, man. It's like, the same reason that they asked Gronk about Aaron Hernandez. Yeah. When it ha- you know what I mean? Like, But it's been a whole year, though. Like, it, like we got to, like, stop with it. Like, there's, never stop. there's no way the Steelers would ever bring him back, and you just got to, like— nip it in the butt like i just don't want any more antonio brown questions like asked to anyone in really Pittsburgh. yeah if antonio brown mentally was with a therapist who cleared him had his life back in order there is no way the steelers offer him a contract <sighs> i i would need like i would uh, sign him on a one-year veteran minimum you think one-year veteran minimum what's the worst that happens we cut him yeah that's true like he's still an elite talent that's that's true he would have to really show that he is a changed person if that's the i would case. need him to vlog a weekend at an all-inclusive with juju oh and i would need to see that they're friends again. i was just gonna say i would need him to do community service basically every single day he's no, in Pittsburgh, i'm setting so. him to get wasted and talk to juju all right i mean i don't know if that's the best thing for mental health i would need him think. on the mark madden show once a week no sitting next to mark <laughs> oh, God. sitting next I, that's it okay so <laughs> here it is and i'm gonna put this on instagram and tag you mark oh, so please God. don't attack me hell he's going to attack you i you know, know mark madden <laughs> love the show I believe that if Antonio Brown came back to the Steelers and signed a one-year veteran minimum contract, we should put in the contract that he has to be on the Mark Madden show once a week for the entire season. Wow. And also, caveat, throw it in there, he has to be on one of Juju's video game streams a month. <laughs> a month. That's, I mean, that's only like four. I mean, Madden wouldn't care about that, but I mean, that'd Madden would hate that. That'd be entertaining, yeah. Mark, I'm just saying we could throw this into your show. <laughs> Just an idea, buddy. It's a hell of an idea to get ratings, that's for sure. So let's get some other uh, NFL news. Um, the Patriots are most likely, this is the rumor I heard today, to bring back Tom Brady after he values himself, mm-hmm. but with two very significant names added to the roster. Okay. Those names are one A.J. Green okay, and one Hunter Henry. Now, A.J. Green, I mean, we kind of speculated for a while that Would that was obvious. Would you trade your 23rd overall? I think it's 23rd. Overall pick for A.J. Green if you're the Patriots? Well, I thought he was a free agent. Is he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, A.J. Green and Hunter Henry are both free agents. See, I don't think I knew A.J. Green was. Oh, and yeah. I think this is the second time I didn't know A.J. Green was. Oh, yeah. A.J. Green and Hunter Henry are free agents. Now, A.J. Green could definitely... Oh, wait. I have an idea. They I could... have the full list of 2020 free agents hmm. i bookmarked it now aj green could definitely come not with a ridiculous extension or ridiculous contract but it could be a good one-year deal maybe worth like 10 maybe 12 mil or if something you do like that, that are you signing brady to a one-year deal 
Like, I know he, but I'm saying, like, if I'm like, yeah. yo, Tom, we brought in Hunter Henry, we brought in A.J. Green. Well, I was going to also say this, too. I'm pretty sure if they sign Hunter Henry, they're going to give Hunter Henry, like, a five-year contract oh, easily. Like, Hunter Henry might be the first guy to kind of set the market for tight ends because then George Kittle and Travis Kelsey are going to try yeah. to overdo that. Evan Ingram should be in there a little Evan bit. Ingram should be that, yeah. He has some more ground. I honestly wanted the Patriots to try to get O.J. Howard away from the Bucks. Mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like that was an easy pick too. Yeah, yeah, but no, I, I could definitely see Hunter Henry and AJ Green going there. I think the biggest issue with Brady this year, as as bad as he looked this year, you could make an argument that his weapons just were not up to par. Do you know where I'm going if I'm AJ Green? Where? Saints. Yeah, it, it would be a better. I don't know if it'd be better at minimum, but it wouldn't be oh. a big deal. Hmm. I am. If I'm AJ Green, I am not even touching minimums. All right. I am through the roof. I am AJ motherfucking Green. You know damn well he doesn't have that mentality, man. <laughs> no, but we also have no... I have no idea what mentality he has. Well, here's the other thing, too. This is a dude that did not play an entire year, though. Yeah. And you could also argue... And I'm well, not, I'm not going to put on this... On the Bengals, is it much different not well, playing well, a year versus playing a well, year? Well, here's the thing, the though. I mean, could that be you. held against him for the fact that he didn't play all year? I mean, I have never heard of one's ankle being acting up for four months. That could... I mean, I twisted my ankle in gym class and it still hurts. That's fair. Yeah. I don't know if you're a world caliber athlete compared to AJ Green, but hey. Not compared to him, but I am a world caliber athlete because I'm on the world and I'm an athlete. Ah. So, sucks to suck. Nerd. <laughs> um, you're not caliber, though. I mean, it is. If you're on the world, <laughs> you are of the caliber of that world. Okay. And saying you're not caliber is not a thing, is it? I don't know. I'm just trying to, just, I'm trying to, trying to say. I'm trying to save face from that great comeback, so. Thank you. Teddy Bridgewater. <laughs> Uh, I read today getting number of teams coming after him, and Good. he could get a contract of upwards of thirty mil a year. Good. Teddy Bridgewater absolutely deserves to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. For who? Because mm. let's look at the let's bring up the uh, I want to bring up the draft order because I honestly think there's going to be like five or six quarterbacks that switch teams, and by switch some of them are currently free agents. Right. I mean the the list of free agents here that don't. I don't think they're back with their regular team. So, Dak Prescott back, Tom Brady back, Drew Brees back, Ryan Tannehill back, Rivers new team, Winston new team, Mariota new team, Teddy Bridgewater new team, uh, Case Keenum goes back, and that's pretty much it for named guys. Who gets a bigger contract, Jameis Winston or Teddy Bridgewater? Teddy Bridgewater. That's okay. not even a, yeah, no, mm-hmm. that's not even a conversation, in my opinion. I, I could be wrong down the road, but that's... Uh, Who gets a bigger contract, Ryan Tannehill or Teddy Bridgewater? Teddy Bridgewater, because I feel like they uh, franchise tag Tannehill. Okay. And it also depends on what they do with Derrick Henry. But I firmly believe Teddy Bridgewater will get a contract that makes him top five paid quarterbacks in the NFL. Ooh. Well, if you think about it, Stafford's six, I think, with his contract yeah, from but a couple I mean, years back, and that's dated now. That's true, but Stafford's extension was weird, where he was the second-to-last quarterback that got the big contracts from the rookie scale. And then when his extension was due, it was obvious that they were going to have to give him more. So. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, like, he's still, like, I think fifth or sixth, and his contract's not that bad. Mm-hmm. So I think Teddy B could be up there. But, I mean, uh, teams that could sign Teddy Bridgewater, and I would say that makes sense. Okay. Not the Bengals. No. Maybe the Redskins. I think they want to give him... A- they got Dwayne Haskins, so I don't know if I they mean, do. I don't know if they'd want to give like a big contract though to another quarterback though. I will say this: hmm. Dwayne Haskins was not drafted by this team. That's true. This team right now. That is completely fair. It's Josh Rosen's situation, possibly. Ooh, a I lot mean, of people are saying maybe they go two if two is healthy, but who knows? Hmm. Uh, Detroit Lions, no. Unless they trade Stafford, which I don't see happening. They should trade Stafford to New England. Man, that'd be fun. I would love to. I would. I want Matt Stafford to win a ring. Fan, yeah. I want him to win a ring. Yeah. Giants or no? Mm-mm. Dolphins still in the conversation for me. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just an obvious one. Hometown can go back. I think Flores would. Well, love and him. last year he was looking to go there. Right, so. and I think I think he wanted to see how Miami would work before he committed to something like that. And I think seeing Flores and the potential that he has there, I think he would want to go there. Chargers, I could see that. I know you were a big Tyrod guy, but I, I could really see Teddy Bridgewater in L.A. I think him and Melvin Gordon would be a really exciting offense. This was my pick. Okay. Panthers. Stay in the South. Kyle Allen, I think, would, would work very well for him. He's got a hell of a running game to work with, so there's that. Kyle Allen would work for the Panthers? 
What do you Sorry, mean? I meant Matt Rule. <laughs> oh, okay. No, you're good. You're good. I, just, I, I meant and, Matt Rule, yeah. But there are some people that think Kyle Allen could be something. Me, personally, I think he's going to be a backup. Kyle Allen is one of those guys that everyone sees how great of a high school prospect he was and saw that he didn't do as well in A&M. So they're like, there's some sort yeah. of talent there that we could just extract, and it could be great. And it just isn't going to be a thing. Cardinals, no. Nope. Jacksonville, I wish, but no, because nope. of the big contract. Browns, no. Jets, no. Raiders? The heir apparent to... Uh... Derek Carr? I mean, maybe. Well, I think they, they don't want Carr. They're very clear about it. And they're, they're going to offer Brady upwards of 60 mil. I would give Derek Carr Just. one more year to see what he can do because I think this is the year with a much better offense to work with because I think he, he put up good numbers last year. So. And he was, he's, what, three years removed from every P conversation. Three years removed, bring up every I just think freaking show, I feel he needs like. An, he needs an offense, and he just needs to be healthy, and I think he will do wonders. I don't know. I thought you were going to say he just needs to be held. Uh, All right. One last team, and then I want to get to baseball. All right. Questions. Who will be the starting quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts next season? I say Jacoby Brissett still. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, There's a lot of rumors about Rivers and Winston there. Well, that'd be entertaining. If Frank Reich can somehow find a way to do wonders with Jameis Winston, he is a quarterback god. It's interesting. Yeah. It's very I, interesting. I got one more football question for you. Football. What do you make of the rumors that uh, apparently the Miami Dolphins are more infatuated by Justin Herbert than Tua? So I had somebody tell me that. And, and honestly, I've now taken a stance of I can't tell you your mock is incorrect because no one's mock is ever correct. Right. I had someone tell me that they only see two quarterbacks going in the first round, uh, Tua and Burrow. They're insane. And that, well, a lot of their understanding came from – Herbert has, you know, he had all the the world in the palm of his hand and never did anything at Oregon. He had a very mediocre senior bowl, which is a stance you have as well. Right. Um, he, had a, he had a mediocre, well, not mediocre, but he had an un, a, unimpressive Rose Bowl. That, yes. And then my, you know, comment back is quarterbacks are the most important position. Right. So he will, you know, I said that uh, there's potential to be five. Quarterbacks. Oh yeah, the there will. Ne- I don't think there will ever be a first round again where no less than three quarterbacks are taken again. The last time I remember that happening was EJ Manuel. Yep, and that was just because that quarterback class was horrendous. Yeah, it, I mean the class has to be good, but even you get into next year, and I, I cannot wait for Fields versus Trevor Law. <sighs> we we say you say I'm Justin Fields. <laughs> you are Justin Fields, man. And I think Trevor Law. I, what I mean by that is that I like Justin Fields more as a person, as a kid. I like Ohio State more than Clemson. But Trevor Lawrence is arguably the best prospect we've ever seen. Right. And that's saying a lot. He's Manning. Of, yeah. He's Andrew Luck, we thought, yeah. was going to be the next Manning. And he could have been. But, man, Trevor Lawrence is going to be, like, the savior for some franchise. I'm intrigued to figure out what team is going to be bad enough this year that's going to get him. Damari Carroll just signed with the Rockets. Oh, huh. that's pretty big. Uh, I mean, let's okay. So let's go through the draft order and find teams that are high that are going to be crap next year too. All right. I uh, the Bengals aren't going to go for number one nope. for a quarterback. Mm-mm. I could see if the Redskins play Haskins this year and he doesn't do well. Mm-hmm. I could see them moving him and trying to get one of those two because they didn't get their guy. Okay, I could see that. Lions. I don't see them being this bad, though. I could see, though, them wanting to go quarterback next year if Matt Stafford doesn't lead them to the playoffs. Yes, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Giants, nope. Nope. Dolphins, I don't believe they'll need a quarterback next year, but it's we also the see. Dolphins. We uh, shall see. Yeah. Uh, Chargers, I believe, take a quarterback this year. Panthers. That'd be intriguing. If they don't get a quarterback this year and they do go Kyle Allen, or, or that's another name we're not talking about in this carousel, mm-hmm. Cam Newton. Yeah, that's true. I mean, true. he's going to be a starter next year. Yeah. I would love to see him in an offense that highlights him. The big see. the big issue is is that they have to find a trade partner for him in that big contract, which is going to be kind of tough to do. Put him in Miami. Not as bad. I mean, what about, <laughs> this is a very, very dumb scenario on my part, but could you imagine if they traded Cam Newton to Jacksonville for Nick Foles and just have two monstrous contracts on each other's teams, essentially? I mean, honestly... I don't hate that, and here's why. Jacksonville doesn't need a whole lot to run their offense. Nope. Garner Minshew showed that. But with a little flair, they are a very good team. Mm -hmm. Other side of the ball, 
the Panthers have proven they virtually need nobody at quarterback to run their offense. Chris, right. Christian McCaffrey is the best skill player in the NFL. But Christian McCaffrey taking the ball for 10 or more times a game has proven to have been a very, very ineffective way to go. They have a losing record with him like with over 10 touches a game. I mean, I understand that. I'm not blaming him for that. That's I'm fair. blaming the quarterback play. That's fair. So what I'm getting at is Nick Foles is a smudge better than no quarterback, which okay. is Kyle Allen. <laughs> so yeah, it's an interesting one. Uh, Cardinals have their quarterback. Jacksonville we talked about. The Browns. If Baker's shit next year. Because they, they – new, be, new be, regime as well. I, year three, I believe. Yes. Yeah, year three. Because year one broke the rookie record. Year two – Sophomore slump. Pile of garbage. Yep. For me personally – I think any quarterback taken by the Cleveland Browns is cursed. Okay. And you know why, in all seriousness, that I'm staying with that stance? Why? Because John freaking Dorsey got fired. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. the guy that got Patrick Mahomes, basically. Like, mm-hmm. So, Jets don't need a quarterback. Raiders, maybe, if they don't get one. I can see that, yeah. But they'd have to be... They would have to trade picks, because they're not going to be bad. I highly doubt that, yeah, because they want to make a good impression in their first year in Vegas. I can see the Falcons being shit next year and going quarterback. Get rid of Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan's getting up there in age, man. Uh-huh. I could definitely see it. I could see... Indy? Yeah, I, I just thought about that. My reasoning is that I don't see them being complete shit. No, because I, I could I, see them going for a quarterback next year. I trust Chris Ballard like with most franchises, so I find it very hard to believe that they're going to be that awful. All right, let's get to baseball. Let's do it. Did you see Mike Trout's comments? Because uh, he's by far... The greatest baseball player that I've ever seen. I saw that it was pretty much the same as everyone else in baseball when it comes to the the Astros cheating yeah. scandal. So Trout said, if I hit a home run to win it at home, mm-hmm. you can do whatever you want to me. Yeah. Oh, no. There was someone, I believe, I can't remember if it was a, uh, it was a Yankee or something, but they were quoted as saying, like, if I hit a game-winning home run to get my team to the World Series, you can rip my pants off. Yep. And I will be happy. So Yeah, and another tweet came out that uh, Altuve was walking around a media day shirtless. <laughs> which is funny because he was probably thinking, and where he was tapping, uh-huh. he now, and I don't know if he did before or whatever, he has a tattoo there. Oh. So the speculation is that he was always tapping this tattoo or something, but who knows how long he had it. Hmm. Something along those lines. But the conversation why Altuve didn't want to shirt ripped off is because his wife was mad at him for being shirtless on TV. Which I find that really suspicious. But you're okay on media day. Yeah, walking around with no shirt Yeah, someone tweeted his wife's going to be pissed. (laughs) Because he's obviously doing it as like a thing, right? Right. His wife must be really demanding in that case. So stupid. I saw today that uh, someone apparently got behind the uh the batter's mound for uh the during Astros BP and was banging a trash can and then just ran away. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh over under how many games are in baseball? 162. Over under 130 games, one Astro player gets beamed. Under. Really? Yeah. Over under 90. <laughs> That's tough. Uh... And by beamed, I mean intentional. Intentional? Yes. I say under. The fact that the Astros, I think it was Coach, came out and said that baseball has to do something to protect these guys with premeditated attacks. No. Screw them. I'd say throw it every – I would spend – if I'm the manager of a team and we're playing a series against the Astros, I'm almost considering just hitting every guy. Prove a point for baseball. Man. Uh, that that's the problem that the commissioner's office essentially has now is that there's never – there's not going to be a game played if that's the case. No. No. I, mean, I don't that, want to play the Astros. There might be this might be one of the few times that I'd be excited to see the Yankees like hurt someone or the Yankees like just win a game and just destroy someone. I and what sucks about this is that even without the buzzers and all that, like the Astros are still a good team. Are you giving uh, Aaron Judge an MVP? What for uh, Correa? I mean, not Altuve. Correa, uh, for Altuve. Because I am in my personal record book. In your personal record book, one hundred percent. Aaron Judge has that MVP now. I'm not awarding anyone the title. I believe the title, like the championship, is vacated. Mm-hmm. But Aaron Judge deserves MVP. See, I don't know because it's because I could definitely see vacating the title because they didn't win it. But at the same time, though, like even with the cheating and all that, like with you, if you just put the numbers up, Judge did not have as good of a year as Altuve. It's almost the same principle. Yeah, but Altuve cheated. 
the team cheated to win a World Series. It's the same principle. 100%. But what I'm saying here is on an individual level. Mm-hmm. And I get what you're saying that if you're not going to award someone a different title, you can't award someone the MVP. Right. The reason the MVP is different is because it's a individual award. Mm-hmm. Um, and in that individual, you know, the pitchers didn't have for the Astros drums or something like that. Right. So then you get into the conversation, all right, the World Series, like, what if they didn't even cheat? What if it didn't matter? Blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. 100% it mattered for the MVP. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, what, were there, was it their manager that came out and said, who knows if it impacted the Astros? Like, who knows if it impacted us? It could have hurt it us. The, it was the owner. Owner, yeah. Like, fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> we can agree on that. Um, so other questions. I mean, the league screwed this up. They really did. And we all thought it was good at first. We did. And what's funny about that is that Commissioner Manfred... Even in his quotes, like over the weekend, discussing the allegations and all that, he has no clear common sense about saying that we're going to get it right or we're going to. I know, let his mind done. Yeah. His mindset is like, I don't want to deal with this anymore, which yep. is completely idiotic to me. Of all the different news pieces of information that came out over the weekend after the like suspensions and the firings were done, you find out Carlos Beltran was the ringleader behind this. And you gave players immunity for this. Yep. You are an absolute idiot. <laughs> so their immunity play was to basically be like, guys, come tell us what happened. Mm-hmm. They're idiots. Because this was all coming out without players. I don't even know if the Astros did. Any, you know what I mean? Like, I don't even think any – like, did any Astros actually go and take advantage of this immunity? I don't know from the top of my head. I, I don't know who talked to the commissioner or not. And so. it might not be public knowledge, but my point is this probably would have came out anyways. Yeah. I'd, I'd be I, I I'm pissed as a huge baseball fan. Well, and here's the thing, I personally think the commissioner looked at these allegations and immediately thought this had to have come from the top. They didn't think that it would have been a player indicted thing or anything like that. And I think it's just because the standard that's held to it, whereas the manager, you should know what's going on with your team. So therefore, you are either turning a blind eye to it or you are the one that is essentially kind of guiding them to it. So I guess that's why that they thought this must have been Hinge. This must have been um, Lunhow yeah. who started the thing. But then coming out and you find out that it's a veteran player who's been around for years and he was the ringleader behind the whole thing. And there's all these players who, instead of coming out and saying, oh, I should have stopped it ahead of time, you participated in it, then... Like, it's the players who did this. Yeah. The players absolutely should have been punished. I mean, everyone should have been. But you know what I'm Googling right now? Hmm. Let's see. Sanctions. Player sanctions. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Okay. This is exactly the information I wanted to make this next statement. All of those players should have been punished. Reason being, Bounty Gate. Yeah. Different sport. Get it? Mm Mm-hmm. I wanted to Google to make sure that players were suspended for Bounty Gate. Right. Because that was a top organizational type thing. And maybe it wasn't like the owners or whatever. But it was Greg Williams uh-huh. and Sean Payton. Right. Sean Payton was suspended for a year. Yep. And Vilma was suspended for an entire year. Uh-huh. Anthony Hargrove, eight games. Will Smith, four games. And then uh, Scott Fujita, three games. This is a really interesting concept, though. Because with Bounty Gate, it was all about you were essentially targeting a player to get a extrinsic reward yes with baseball it was more about there was all these technological advances that you were doing to help you win so i mean what could i would argue be- this is the barbaric stance yeah of technology. Ba- bounty gate bounty gate was like different though because you wouldn't necessarily say it was trying to help you win it was trying to injure someone i was more looking for a case in which a manager or a high level executive order okay so the you know executes order 66 <laughs> so <laughs> i'm i was trying to find a case where something that was brought up from the top okay that the players followed through with didn't say anything granted this is kind of not technically illegal and cheating mm-hmm. but something in that pattern of hey we're gonna cheat or we're gonna do this and the players go yeah we're gonna do that okay did they get suspended okay. that is what i was so looking for it's not a, it's not a complete apple to so apple. you're looking for something where that the absolute hierarchy said we are going to do this and the players fell in line not necessarily that the players came up with this on their own and therefore everyone above turned a blind eye to it that and i wanted to see if the league decided that the players should be suspended in Mm -hmm. in the nfl obviously a different league different manager did or a different commissioner did but my point is i don't understand why these players aren't being punished uh for just going along with it yeah and and at the same time like 
I would have a conversation about uh, ownership in Houston. Yeah. This I just, mean, this just speaks to the absolute truth that we all know about when it comes to common sense and when it comes to being able to actually get a decision, right? Adam Silver is the best commissioner in pro sports. Yeah. All right. Keep it shuffle for the last five minutes. Ready? <laughs> Come on, Greg. Greg, get up. Greg. Get off your ass, Greg. Oh, I hate you. Oh. He's doing it for the podcast fans. There you go. I wish everyone in the world could see that clip, so I'm going to cut that. By all means, it's okay. I, oh. I do idiot stuff on here all the time. So yeah, that's whatever. why I don't. I don't know why you got so offended I the don't first know. time. You got I, on I your know. feelings. I, need, I needed to loosen up. A little. You needed that whole glass of water. Yeah, I did. All right, so we have the idiot hour tonight, which will obviously this will. I'll probably drop the episode here soon, but mm. we'll have some clips cut up. Um, two beers deep this Thursday. As of right now, will be Greg and Josh Elsass, the disgruntled ex employee. Mm-hmm. Um, the tough thing is, I'm just going to say. It's going to be you two because I technically don't know if I'm going to get the days off, but I think I'll be home anyways. Okay. So Thursday will be Greg and Josh. Um, good luck. Thank you. Be sorely missed. Yeah. I'm going to probably drink a lot. I would too. Yeah. Because um, mm-hmm. I will be back taking care of my parents' dog mm-hmm. who had surgery that apparently needs to eat five times a day, take pills three times a day, and shit seven times a day. And that all just had dropped on my plate this morning. You're basically a live-in nurse. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, I get free food, but... All right, guys, thank you so much for watching, listening, however you are consuming your content. Uh, We will see you Thursday. So...